Hello everyone, I'm the presenter of the paper Asynchronous Distributed Variational Gaussian Process or ADVGP for regression. My name is Hao Pen. I'm very sorry that due to my visa problem I cannot attend the conference in person. So instead I'm presenting our paper using this audio. This paper was collaborated with Shan Lian Zhe, Xiao Zhang and Yuan Qi. And uh, Mm, to start with, um, as some of us already know, Gaussian process or GP is a very powerful model for problems such as regression on small data set. It is a non-parametric model which can estimate uncertainty and also resist to noise. On the right, we show a typical example of Gaussian process model trained on a one-dimensional data set shown as the pink dots, we show the predictive mean of Gaussian process in blue and the predictive standard deviation as in red lines. The model where evidence of Gaussian process has simple uh, multivariate Gaussian form. However, with this evidence, uh, the Gaussian process is uh, very difficult to work with on large data set because to compute model evidence um, and uh, the predictive distribution, we need to take the inverse of an n by n matrix, which um, takes order of n cube time and the order of n square space, which cannot scale to very large data set. Many existing methods have been developed to scale GP to large data sets. Some of them are based on the work of Tisha's version of low bound, which could scale the data up to millions of samples. For example, the online stochastic inference introduced by Hansman and the, the synchronous update using the MapReduce framework uh, developed by Gao. However, in their paper, these models can only scale to millions of data points which still cannot meet the real-world needs where we can expect like billions of data points. Um, now, um, others use uh, like a other syn synchronous platform like TensorFlow. Researchers can push the limit even higher. However, we take a, a different approach our solution is that instead of using a synchronized approach, we use a synchronous inference, which could apply to the platform such as the Prime Server. Uh, for Prime Server, we have a set of servers and a set of workers, uh, which forms a bipartite graph. The servers only communicate to workers and vice versa. The servers store the model parameters distributedly. In rational Gaussian process case, the parameters include the kernel parameters and the rational parameters, and the workers store the local data points. And feature a feature of the primary server is that it allows the communication to be asynchronous and the level of synchronization can be controlled by a delay limit. Using the asynchronous algorithm allows us to eliminate an enormous amount of waiting time caused by the synchronous coordination when the number of uh, the servers and the workers becomes very large. At the same time, we can fully exploit the computational power and the network bandwidth. To apply Gaussian process for the asynchronous framework, we derived a novel version of low bound for GP regression model using a weight space augmentation. We first define a mapping function that maps the original d-dimensional data into an m-dimensional feature space. We assign 
await W for the mapped feature space. Then we have the joint distribution for Gaussian process um, with the induced uh, in, introduced uh, rational, rational parameters. Uh, if we marginalize the rational variables, we can get back to the exact Gaussian process model. Now we apply to Jason's inequality, and then we can get a low bound for the um, log model evidence of Gaussian process. This low bound has two parts. The first part it can be decomposed by data points and can be disputed across workers. And the second part is uh, only a KL divergence between two Gaussians. It can be seen as a convex function that only depends on the rational parameters. Using these properties, we can derive um, the delayed proximal gradient algorithm for ADVGP. The workers will pull for the parameters as it receives the new parameters. It will compute the local gradients. Then it will push the gradients to the server without waiting. The servers are passive and they wait for the push and pull request from the workers. They will update the parameters after collecting enough gradient updates. Most of the communications are asynchronous and we can reduce the total waiting time. To give an example, we use three workers and one server and illustrate the computation and the communications here. At the beginning, we can assume the server has the workers gradients at the iteration t minus one. Then and the server will compute the parameters for iteration t and then we assume at the beginning the workers already received the the new parameters at the iteration t. Mm? Then the workers will um, compute the gradient at the iteration t and send it back to the server. However, we assume that for there, there's a slow worker which uh, does not send uh, the, t grad the gradient at the iteration t in time. So, after computation, only two of the three gradients are received by the server. But the server will not wait for the slow worker. Instead, it will compute the, the new parameters based on the two local gradients from iteration t and also the up outdated local gradient from iteration t minus one. It updates the parameters for iteration t plus one and broadcast them to all the workers. At this time, the slow worker will receive the parameter from the iteration t plus one. So it could catch up with others, other faster workers. The question is whether the gradient-based approach converges. And the answer is yes for our rational parameters. Our lower bound has a Lipschitz continuous part and a convex part that is um, with respect to the rational parameters. According to the convergence theory of proximal gradient updates, we and the rational parameters of ADVGP will converge with a suitable choice of the learning rate. In practice, we found that using ADA delta algorithm with a suitable parameter, the where all the parameters all the parameters can converge in most of the cases. Another benefit of our rational low bound is that we have the flexibility 
to use different low rank structures. For example, if we set our mapping function to have the form shown as L transpose K, and where L is the lower triangular decomposition of the kernel matrix on a set of M inducing inputs, our bound can be connected to Tisha's bound if we marginalize the rational variable W. We can also choose many other low rank structures under few constraints. For example, we can use the eigen decomposition, which relates our model to Nyström approximation. And we can even use an ensemble form of Nyström approximation to de derive a new rational low bound. To evaluate the predictive performance of our model, we compare our model with the online method SVIGP and also the synchronous update this GP, either using the gradient descent or LBFGS on a small data set with 2 million data points. We use the low, low, stru low rank structure that relates the t shirt bound and use the 100 inducing inputs and 200 inducing inputs. We tested it on a small, a single machine with 16 cores and show the root mean square errors as a function of training time. As we can see, our method ADVGP is fast in most of cases and the SYGP is fast at the beginning of training but it slows down uh, as the iteration increases. Mm, this is because maybe due to the uh, stochastic behavior of a uh, SVIGP. And uh, this, the GP, this GP using LBFHS is sometimes faster, but uh, it may trap into a local minimum and does not uh, give uh, the best uh, performance, predictive performance. Then we test the ADVGP to see its scalability to even larger cases. We use multiple machines up to 128 cores. In the first experiment in figure A, we fix the data size and increase the number of available cores to 128. We compare the per iteration time as a function of available cores between this GP and the ADV GP. We see towards the 100 28 cores, the decreasing of per iteration time for this GP slows down significantly. For ADV GP, it is almost linear, linear decreasing, linearly decreasing. In the second experiment in figure B, we increase the, num the data size proportionally to the data size and find, uh, find that the uh, per iteration time for this GP uh, using gradient descent increase much faster than ADVGP. This experiment show that ADVGP reduce the waiting time and help scale to large data sets. Eventually, we test ADVGP on a real-world problem with 1 billion training points. In this experiment, we trained on New York City taxi trip data over six years and try to predict the traveling time on test data. We used 1,000 cores in total and compared ADVGP with a linear model implemented in a widely used software called Wopa Rabbit. We also compared them to the naive mean prediction as a baseline. Due to the implementation limitation, we only showed the final result of Wopa Rapid as a horizontal line instead of a, a function over time. But we can see that ADVGP can achieve a much better predictive this result um, within one hour on this billion dataset. So to conclude, we have demonstrated ADVGP on real-world large applications using a synchronous algorithm and shows the potentials to explore other low-rank structures using our variational low bound. 
and thanks for watching my presentation. And if you have any question, uh, I'm sorry that I cannot answer you here in person, but you are more than welcome to send your question to my email at uh, pengh at uh, anomalypurdue.edu.